amazing experience of Mr. Onyx Singhal. If everybody would have a seat, everybody stand up for a minute and give him a standing ovation. How's that? All right, go. Stand up, clap. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's a hug. You get a hug. All right. Thank you for the warm welcoming, and welcome to Washington, D.C., my city. How are you guys liking it so far? Oh, our city. <laughs> I got that. How many of you are from out of town? Oh, a lot of people. Cool. Uh, this is actually the first time I think I've ever had a chance to speak in D.C., and I've been doing this for like five years, so this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go through today, I'm going to talk about pay-per-click. Um, how many of you have experienced or seen or watched any of our videos or anything related to PPC Classroom online? That half of the room, and not this half. Did you guys work that out? PPC side. All right, so, and um, a little bit different um, than... A lot of people here, uh, you guys are into making relationships and, and launching a product. So we're going to take a little bit of a different spin. We're going to talk about how to promote other people's products uh, using affiliate marketing, where actually that can really help you in building relationships. Because one of the things I always say is if you want a strong relationship with someone, give first, then ask. Uh, that's actually one of the biggest keys and biggest tricks to making a great joint venture relationship. And it's how I started. Um, when I started, I knew nobody. Uh, you guys heard Yannick speak, and uh, he lives in the area, and he was the first internet marketer, you know, someone who had made it big, to meet with me for lunch. And I met with him like maybe like six years ago, I was still in college, and even in that situation, we met, and I was gracious enough to, you know, I was so, ha so happy that he met with me, but at no point during that interaction at lunch or thereafter for weeks did I ever approach him to ask him for anything. You know, it would have been very easy for me to say, oh my God, could you please promote Affiliate Classroom? It would be awesome. I never did that. Um, first thing I did is I started selling his products and I started filling his events seats. And even though he knew me, now we had a relationship. I had given first and then I asked. And PPC and other forms of affiliate marketing is exactly what I used to sell his products for him. And it's what I've done for a lot of some of the biggest partners that I you know, have today. So I just realized I need a clicker. Do we have a clicker? I got it. I don't claim to be smart. I just, all right. Um, this number is actually far out of date because this number was something that we discovered in February before we brought in an additional 14,000 students into PPC Classroom. So this was the number we created with about 6,500 students, uh, the ones that went and did something. Uh, and this was the number only collected from those who were actively corresponding with us. You know, kept up the relationship and told us how they were doing. There's a lot of students behind the scenes that kind of fall off, but they're off doing great things. We just don't know. But $4.2 million was what we calculated that was uh, in the span of three months of training. So if you carried out what they were going to make over the year, uh, jobs were quit, um, lives were changed, cars were bought, houses were bought. Uh, believe it or not, marriages were saved. We actually, one of my favorite testimonials was from a woman that talked about how uh, she wrote it in for her husband, because he did PPC Classroom, and apparently it saved their lives, or saved their marriage. That was pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to go through, what I'm going to show you today is how you can launch a PPC campaign tonight. If you chose to skip dinner, you could launch a PPC campaign. Um, I'm not promising that it would be profitable, and we're going to talk about you know, how PPC works, and uh, there's never a guarantee, and I can teach you everything. Um, I could even help you launch it and sit over your shoulders, and there's still no guarantee. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and how to do it real quickly um, to test and to get started. All right. Um, I'm also speaking on behalf of my business partner and close friend Amit Mehta, who is the guru behind this course. I mean, he is the the brilliant mind behind it. I do PPC, but compared to him, um, you know, I I'm, I do nothing. I mean, this guy has in the last three years, uh, and I'll talk about his story. But he went from making $1,200 a month and being I don't know, something like $30,000, $40,000 in debt, living in like a, 
uh, graduate students, you know, one room type of deal, um, to now just living his life. He's currently in Turkey vacationing, and that's what he does all the time. Every few weeks, he just picks up and goes off somewhere. He's making millions and millions a year now, and all on autopilot. I mean, when he's in Turkey, I have no way of getting a hold of him right now. Like, PPC Classroom could be burning to the ground, and I don't know where he is, but that's, that's the lifestyle that he, he's able to live. So I have some questions for you guys. How many of you would love to start being able to make some money within the next four days? Pretty fast, simple, no information overload. There's four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there we go. Um, the goal is to ten, get up to $10,000 a month on autopilot. <laughs> she liked the autopilot part. Um, while traveling the world. It's something that Amit and I put a lot of value on. Um, you know, this year alone I've been to, you know, I spent a lot of time in India. I have traveled all across the U.S. and uh, between the last, within the last year I've been to Singapore, Malaysia, U.K. Um, this year I'll be going to Dubai, Australia, uh, China. I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm saying that this is a lifestyle that we're allowed to live because of what we do. Who's heard of Google? Silly question. This is a little, uh, little uh, phrase that Amit and I say to each other, which makes us laugh a lot of times. And uh, Amit came up with it one day, and it was just goofy. And we, Amit goes, oh, Google equals fast traffic, fast money, good life. And that's actually, I mean, it's simplistic, but in many ways, it is fast traffic. It's the fastest form of traffic. No one can argue that with me. Like, that is the only, so if you wanted, while I'm speaking, to start traffic, this is the only way you could do it and start getting targeted traffic that you're not doing through spamming or whatever. Even if you wanted to go out and say, okay, I'm going to buy a solo ad or whatever, you need the time to research, find it, contact the person, schedule the ad, and then wait for it. This is 15 minutes. Fast money? Well, if you know what you're doing. It can also be fast debt if you don't. So, and then good life. Um, one of the things I ask for uh, is, you know, please no cell phones. Um, let's pay attention because I'm going to go through stuff and at some points I kind of have to get fast a little bit and I go through the whole thing. I'm trying to crunch down about three years of education in 90 minutes. It's, it's a lot and I'm going through each element so that I've given you enough. Um, no bathroom breaks, too late. That last guy that left, that was his, that was the last person leaving. Um, the other thing that Amit and I like to do a lot is it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about Amit. The only reason we go around and show you income proofs and show you the big numbers, it's credibility. We just want you guys to know that we know what we're talking about and that you should follow the advice. But really, in the end of the day, it's about that $4.2 million number. It's about what the students are making. It's about what we've been able to teach. You guys go to sales pages all the time, right? And the whole page is loaded with what the person is making. And I'm not saying that th those are lies or that those aren't true. That very well is true. But they're in the business, what you're buying is education. So they're in the business of teaching you how to do it. So wouldn't you be more interested in what they're teaching others how to make more than really what they're making in some ways? Because those are two different things. You can make a lot of money doing something, but if you can't teach it, then it's of no value to you as a student. Um, together, uh, this year, um, actually, it's going to be over. Between Amit and I, we're looking at about 14 to 15 million in revenue. Um, and I now run a, a international team. We have two offices. We have 50 people in our team. Um, and we're doing all sorts of things. All, which today is not just all PPC, but it all started because of PPC. This is one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite case studies. And it's from, uh, it's from this year, March 11th to March 12th. Um, I had built a list, a really nice list with using PPC. It's been a few years, so this didn't like, happen overnight. Right? But uh, there was a product launching. Now, March 11th and March 12th, uh, that, was, uh, that was the 24-hour period. March 11th was when it was launching. And, and I thought it was a really good fit for my list. So I was participating in the launch, and I wanted to help them uh, promote, and I wanted, you know, but there's a little problem. I was in India early March, and I hadn't really recognized, but I booked my flight from India to U.S. on March 11th. And that flight takes... 24 hours, like between all layovers and all that stuff. So I wasn't going to be like at my computer at all, right? And there was a huge promotion coming out. Um, scheduled some email blasts, got on the plane, and landed in Atlanta 
and I'm like itching to get through the security line because God forbid you pull out your camera, uh, your phone during the security line, like customs. Um, got out, went to the baggage claim. The first thing I did is whipped out my cell phone. I was getting online and seeing, and this was a report I pulled up. That's commission. That's not sales. So in a 24-hour flight while I was sleeping and, you know, just watching movies or doing whatever or trying to make sure my legs don't fall off, uh, $230,000 almost. And that was just, it was huge. So how many, of you, how many of you would love to have something like that? Eventually, one day. I'm not saying you're going to have this next week or tomorrow. Uh, I told you, it took me three years to build a list that did this for me. And then usually I say, well, what if I make that much money? So... Uh, this is one of my favorite students. He's uh, in, I want to say New Zealand. Uh, it's pronounced Hyom. And he started with, in 2007 with us with PPC Classroom 1.0. And he went from zero to $1.5 million in less than a year using the exact same strategies. Nothing different. It's not like I put these, these case studies in a separate room and teach them the secrets and sell other stuff to everyone else. It's the same exact stuff. I didn't even know he existed until we got this case study. So he was just going through the same training. Um, this is actually, oops, this is actually Amit's family member, struggling big time. Uh, he ran a offline uh, Indian grocery store and was going in debt every day, every month, running it more and more. Couldn't get out of the lease, was, to put lightly, screwed. And was getting ready to pack up with his, his kids and his wife and move to India because he was broke and he had no other option. Amit stepped in and said, give me a couple of months. Don't move yet. Let me just work with me for two months. And turned it around. He is now not making 10000 a month. He's making almost 17000 a month. He just sold his store for a massive loss and could have cared less. Got out of it and is now full time. Um, and his entire life has been changed. So here's a one big thing I'm going to ask. Please keep an open mind. All right? When I first got started, that was my biggest, biggest, biggest fall. And that was the biggest reason it took me a year to have my first success, where I could have done it probably in like two weeks. I thought I knew it all. And I thought everybody teaching me, everybody talking to me is lying. Come on, seriously. How many of you have thought, we teach something here, but then me and Ken, boo, we go to the back room over there. We're like, Shh, let's talk the real stuff now. <laughs> those, those dingbats over there are going to go try that stuff, but we're going to talk about this stuff. That's not, it's not, that's not what we do, guys. It really isn't. All right? It's about how hard you put, you know, the difference between the guys that make it and the ones that don't, it's just two words. It's just hard work. Okay? That's all it is. If you fail once, if you fail twice, if you fail three times, you're actually, a lot of people are like, well, I'm failing. I'm on the wrong track. Actually, you're on the right track. Okay? Amit, 15 failed campaigns. 15. He's already in debt. Right? 15 failed campaigns before he had his first successful one. Honestly, how many of us would have done 15? I wouldn't. I'll admit that. I wouldn't last through 15. I just wouldn't. Right? But ask yourself that. Right? Can you keep your mind open enough to absorb the information you're given, put some trust in it, and then the second part of it is to focus. Because if you're not going to focus, right, you guys have learned a lot of different models today, yesterday, right? There's that business model, there's this business model. How many of you have ideas that have come up this weekend? Right? How many of you had more than one idea come up this weekend? Pick one. I'm serious. Pick one, okay? Pick one and focus in on it, even if it's not mine. Just pick one. Because um, I'll, I'll tell you one story, and this is a pretty, it's a pretty close story to, to my heart. Uh, I was reading a news uh, when I was in college, and you know, I was all about, I want to start a business, all about entrepreneurship, and I just didn't know where to start. No one in my family owns businesses. I don't have uh, any business expertise to turn to. My grandfather, who passed, was a big industrialist in India, but I never had a chance to really get to absorb any of that from him. So um, I was reading, a, I don't remember what magazine it was now, Newsweek, Business 2.0, one of those. And it was an article about Mark Cuban. You guys know who Mark Cuban is? You know, Self-made billionaire, owns the Dallas Mavericks, and just brilliant man. Um, and it, said, it was about an article about him. And at the, I read the whole article. I was mesmerized. Um, and 
at the very end of it, it had this like really hidden in the corner. It was like, by the way, Mark Cuban responds to emails. Here's his personal email address. He will respond. I was like, bullshit. The hell he will respond. I'm testing that. So I went right to my email address uh, and I typed an email to him and I said, here's my situation. I'm brand new, I'm young. I don't know what I'm doing. I really want to make it big. Can you give me the one big piece of advice? Right? And I really thought, I mean, I was checking my email every 15 seconds because I thought he's going to embark upon me the secret. Right? And I'm just going to take it and I'll be a millionaire by next year. And because, you know, Mark did it. His response to me, he did respond. He responded to me from the, on a, on, he was on a plane to a Dallas Mavericks game. And he actually typed that. He said, excuse the short response. Nice to hear from you. I'm on a plane. Here's my advice. Because, oh, in my email, by the way, I had said, hey, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. I'm working on this. And I'm working on this. Right? So I had like five projects I was working on. His advice to me, pick one. Sincerely, Mark. And I was like, you stupid son of a... I was like, what the hell? That's the worst advice ever. You don't just do one. You're in like 18 lines of businesses. Like, you know, you're not... You're lying to me. It took me a year of doing five things at a time until I finally picked that one. And within a month, I had made more money than I had made in the whole past year combined. And I'll, and I'll, I'll go through some of that. Um, I, ha I got a story from Mike Filsame once that, you know, unfortunately it was like by the time I had already learned the concept, but it really puts it in a great light. He said, if you work on 10 projects every day, right, and you spend an hour on each project every day, and you need 100 hours to finish each project, right, it'll take you 100 days to finish 10 projects. You will come out of it with 10 projects done. Now what? Now you got to do the marketing, blah, blah, blah. You got, eight, you got a gazillion things to do. However, if you dedicated all 10 hours to one project, you'd have your first project done in 10 days. And that, I mean, that gave me goosebumps when he told me that. I was like, wow, that really makes sense. That, that really drives that point home. So open your mind and focus. Um, here's the ugly truth. Let's just accept it right now, OK? Accept it and move on. Very few succeed. It's not because the content's not good. It's not because the education's not good. It's not because it's not possible for everyone. It's because of the things that I've been sharing with you. And why? Well, lack of focus, closed mind, but there's a few more reasons. Systems, OK? Ever walk into a McDonald's? You've seen some similarities. Things are in the same place. Things are being run the same way. Um, they're running a multi-billion dollar uh, corporation off by 16-year-olds. You know, It's because of the systems. You need a good system to follow. You need a blueprint. Okay? Don't reinvent the wheel. It's a waste of time. I tried to do it because I was a know-it-all kid. Right? I tried to do it, wasted my time for a year, finally just listened to some advice. Lack of guidance. Have some people to talk to. You know, you're in a perfect room right now of like minds that, that you should network and you should go away with some good contacts. No follow-up. If something fails, it fails, and you move on to the next. That's bad. Because remember, I told you, failure is not the wrong road. It's the right road a lot of times. Mistakes are the right road. No taking action at the right opportunity. That's a big one. Um, because you know, if you make a mistake once or twice, now you've got cold feet. Sometimes that right thing comes along the third time, and you're too afraid to take action on it. And that, that was it. That was the one. Um, no coaching. This is huge. Enormous. Okay? I don't care who you talk to. If they're successful in business, forget online. Go offline anywhere. They have mentors. They have coaches. I have mentors. I've had multiple mentors. And I've changed my mentors as I go through life. Because sometimes I surpass them. I'm not saying that to, you know, but they mentored me in one area. I hit that area. And now I'm in a different area of business, and so I need a different mentor. And so I grow with my mentors, and I adapt, and I move around. But whatever I'm doing, there's always someone who knows more about it who's helping me. Always, 100% of the time. Not believing, I talked about this, open your mind. Focusing on the negative and being suspicious all the time. It's a really big drain on you. I mean, just, just honestly, don't, I'm not asking you to raise your hands. Look into yourself right now. How much time do you spend 
being suspicious and thinking about the negatives and thinking that the whole world is conspi conspiring against you, right? Just to make sure you don't succeed. Listening to the wrong people, that's something I've definitely done. And staying in the comfort box. Um, comfort box is my biggest mistake, my biggest problem. I love where I am, especially when I start to get content, when I'm like, you know, the money, I'm kind of making money, and I'm fine, I'm traveling. I don't want to do sometimes that next thing because I don't think it'll work. One of the reasons my partnership with Amit has been awesome is because he has totally forced me out of some comfort boxes, things I would never do, ever, that have led to making millions because he just pushed me out of it, which is another great reason you got to have that right network, the mastermind, because those people will push you out of your comfort zones. So it's all started very simple, guys. I, um, I struggled for a year. Um, after 12 months, I hadn't made a penny, and I was working on a lot of different projects. Um, I was in school to be you know, a doctor, and I was doing very well. I, I was on a full scholarship. Um, but it was one day that I realized, um, I'm not actually going to go by this slide, but it was one day that I realized um, I woke up one morning and I could not get out of bed. So at that point, I really couldn't. It wasn't like I physically couldn't. I just didn't want to. And I kind of did one of those internal checks. I said, what's going on? And it was just the thought of another biology class made me want to shoot myself. Like, I just didn't want to do biology anymore. Like, I just didn't want to study that. And I had been very entrepreneurial since I was very young. The first fight I had with my father was when I was seven years old. And the fight was because, and it was a big fight. I slammed the door. Like, I was in a huff and puff for a week because I was trying to convince him to buy a gas station at the end of the street that was for sale. And he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't take the risk. And I, I really saw opportunity. At that age, what I saw was I was looking at our family friends, and I was like, they have a business, they drive a Mercedes. They have a business, they own a big house. They have a business, they have a BMW. Everything in my life tended to revolve around cars, by the way. So um, the only reason I got into business was the cars. Like, I wanted to buy a really, really expensive car. So that was my biggest motivation. But um, that's what I recognized. So you know, that started to come back around in college. I started to really think about that. I was like, you know, I've always wanted to do business. And I took a big leap of faith. And a, a, God bless my parents for being awesome and supporting it all the way. I mean, imagine going to your parents and saying, so I realize I'm in this world selection program on a one-way ticket into an Ivy League med school, full ride. They pay me $3,000 a year to go to school. Here's what I'm going to do. What do you think about this? I'm going to quit that. I'm going to go over here to this school where you got to pay twenty grand a year for me, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, there's no path. Like, I could be living in your house for the next 30 years, Dad. But how do you feel about that? And my dad's like, uh, what? <laughs> like, are you sure? And I was like, that's what I really want to do. And they, they supported it. And now, of course, they walk around to parties, and they're like, that was our idea. We told him, don't do medicine. <laughs> that's not their idea. Um, but they were really, really supportive. Um, my first success, parent simple, affiliate marketing. Um, my first failure was a product called Better GPA. I wrote a book about how to study and how to, get, how to trick your professors into giving you good grades in college. Um, I was very good at it. And I wrote a book. Still, till this day, I say it's one of the best books I've ever written. 270 pages of pure gold. Um, and I, here's what I did. I looked at the market, and I said, lots of college students, lots of college students flunking. College students have to spend a lot of money on college. So obviously, they will want this book because it will help them get the most out of their college. Then I went to Google. I did keyword research. I was study skills, college, admissions. I mean, there was massive searches. Here's the thing. Not a single person was bidding on some of these keywords. I was like, yes, I'm in. I'm, gonna be, I'm brilliant. Of all the people in this world, I am the smartest. And I have come up with the most brilliant idea ever. And I am going to be a multi-gajillionaire by next year. And I'll drop out of college, and I'll own a yacht, and I'll live in Italy. That was like literally off of a book. That was my idea. And um, I set it all up. I, I spent six months writing it. And I didn't have any money, right? And what I always say in business is you either need time or money, one of the two. Okay? So either you can invest a lot of money and shorten the time span, or you have to invest a lot of time, and it takes longer. So I took six months, put the book together. I had to learn all the stuff about I had to learn how to write a sales letter, learn how to do HTML, learn how to do ClickBank and PPC and SEO and all this stuff. And the day came when I had to set up my, my, my I was going to launch my site, and I was really stoked. And I put it up. I had two screens. At that time, I used to have dual monitors. And I had two screens up. 
I put Google on one of them because I was going to launch my favorite click campaign, and I put ClickBank on the other one because that's where my revenue was going to come in. And it was like 12 o'clock, and I came running from class, and I sat down, and I turned it on, right? I turned my campaign on, and turned this on. And I'm hitting refresh, like, like on both. I'm just hitting refresh over and over and over. How many of you do that? Don't lie. Check like eight times. I checked like twice before I even came on stage, like how I'm doing on certain sales. But um, I was checking repeatedly. And by like 1 o'clock, there was one side that was going straight up. It was awesome. <laughs> Other side was like doing nothing. What side do you think was going up? <laughs> By pay-per-click, Google was raping me. And it was like $200 are gone. By the way, $200 I don't have. So it's like, dad, uh, son's in a little bit of debt. He needs help. But of course, I'm like, 1 o'clock, man. I'm so stupid. People are in class right now. So they're not going to be buying this stuff. They'll buy it at like 3 o'clock. Because I get classes kind of finish. Three o'clock, nothing changed. Refresh, 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 nothing changed. Oh, duh. They're hanging, they're deep, like they're like decompressing from classes right now. They're relaxing. They don't want to be buying this kind of stuff. Five o'clock, you know, they'll be relaxed. Five o'clock came, nothing. Oh, of course. Cafeteria, it's food time. Who am I kidding? Seven o'clock. Oh, they're just gonna start studying now, right? You know, they got like the post food like uh, sleepiness. It was like three days later, at which point I was about five, like five, six hundred dollars in debt from it, and I was like, um, I got a problem. I don't think this book is going to sell very well. And um, so, who can tell me the biggest mistake I made? It's a one word. No, I did research. I heard it. Where did I hear from? Test. Test. Exactly. I searched. Have you seen this presentation before? Oh, okay. You know, it's. I don't know though, because this used to, I used to present the same thing like two years ago and no one would get it. But lately, more and more, it's been like the second answer people give is test. So I don't know. You've probably seen this, but anyways. Um, I did all the keyword research. I really, there was a market, but the thing you have to understand is there's a market and then there's a market willing to spend. Those are two very different things. I didn't test the second part. In comes affiliate marketing. Because at this point, God bless all my mistakes I made on that, on that uh, site taught me a lot of internet marketing. And now I used to be on a forum where I used to get asked all the questions. I was at a knowing kid. And there's actually a lot of marketers who I like, talk to and I'm friends with now that remember me from six years ago on that forum. I used to drive people nuts, 10, 15 questions a day. But the only reason they kept answering my questions was because every time I asked a question, they answered it, I went and did it, right? I never asked, 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 and just kept asking. I asked once, and I never asked the same question twice. And once I asked it, I went and did it. So um, someone on that forum, the, people started to like, actually ask me for help now, because I, I had learned all this stuff. So long story short, I bought a software. I loved the software. I got really good at the software. I became an expert at the software on the forum. And I used to sell the software, like link directly to it. And one day, the guy who I used to link to came back and said, what the hell are you doing? Why are you linking to my site? Which was a baffling concept to me because I thought, you son of a gun, I am sending you sales. What he had done, if I had read a little bit more of the email, was he gave me a special link where he said, use this link. You'll make money. And I thought, affiliate marketing is stupid. This stuff doesn't work. I don't, <laughs> I'm too lazy to actually like, copy the other link. Because um, it's too long. It's got all these weird characters in it. What the hell's up with that link? Um, so I didn't do it, right? Here's what led, though. My laziness ended up helping me become successful because I got so tired of answering the same question over and over and over, I decided to make one page where I put all the questions on there. And I, every time someone asked, hey, Anik, how do I do this? I just sent a link to the page and said, go here. It's answered. I don't want to answer it again. At the, while I was making that page, I was like, hey, wait a minute. A lot of people seem to want my help. So what if I just did this? And this is a concept I truly created on my own, but it's a concept we've all seen done a lot. I said, what if for anyone who buys through my link, I send them my email address so they can ask me for help. I'll give them private consult for free if you buy through me. And I was like, just stupid. It's not going to work, but fine. I mean, I'm making the page anyways. Might as well do it, right? So what did I just do? Bonus. Exactly. I added a bonus offer, right? And I put it up that night. I made like six, seven posts, and I went to bed. Woke up about five hours later to go to class, and that forum used to be my home page. So as soon as my Internet Explorer popped up, that page popped up. Very top post said, Anik hasn't sent me his email address yet. Granted, it's been like five hours, but 
I checked it, and the guy was really upset in the post. He's like, you know, Onyx a scam. I've emailed him eight times, and he hasn't sent me his email address, and I bought the software, and it's all bull crap. So I was like, wow, what is going on? So of course I responded to that, but I run to ClickBank. I'm like, did anyone actually buy? $300 in commissions, five hours while I was sleeping. And the light bulb went off. That was the day I threw out every project I was working on and finally heeded the advice I'd been given by a lot of people and said, I'm gonna focus in on this. I'm gonna make like a gajillion posts a day on every forum, I'm gonna do PPC, I'm gonna buy solo ads. The next two months I went on to make over $10,000, right? But only 3,000 of that came through affiliate commissions. So where'd the other 7,000 come from, right? By the way, I'm not just, uh, there is a, if you guys listen to the story, I'm not just giving you a bunch of, you know, ego boosting story. There's, I'm walking you through the process of why and, how to, and why affiliate marketing is the best way to start, okay? So there was like a lot of lessons and I'll, I'll go through them after it. So when I started to sell the ClickBank product, um, what I realized was uh, one day I got an email from one guy who says, I appreciate that you've given me your email address and you're willing to help me. I'm a busy man. So let me tell you, what would you say if I gave you 500 bucks and you just went and did this for me? Now, imagine, kid sitting in his dorm room, takes two hours to do this, Someone just offered him 500 bucks to do it. Comes out to 250 an hour. I was like, yeah, if you insist, I'm doing backflips in my head. I was like, sure. So I did it, sent him the results within a couple of days. He was ecstatic. He said, would it be okay if I sent you my friend? I'm like, yeah, just for you, I'll do it. Again, backflips in my head. I'm like, jeez, that's another $500. His friend sent me, uh, gave me a project, then that other guy, the other guy gave me another project, and then a light bulb went off, and I said, what the hell, what if I made a second page on my site? And I promoted this offer, and I said, hey, if you want me to just do it for you, click here for PayPal $500, and I'll do it for you. And lo and behold, 10% conversion on that. So now what have I just done? Did an upsell, right? But I went even beyond that, right? Because when I first started, I tried to sell a product online without ever testing it, right? I was trying to tell the market what they need and want. Now, in this case, I let the market tell me what they want. Zero risk. I never took any risk involved in the whole process. Now, I kept doing that, but about a month into it, I realized, Jesus, man, I'm taking like three hours of my day. This sucks. Like, I'm like working too hard. And I don't want to do all this. So I was on the phone with one of my friends, Greg Swarge. Uh, uh, not Greg Swarge, sorry. I have another friend, Greg Swarge. Greg Caesar. You guys familiar with Greg Caesar? Anyone here? Um, brilliant man. One of my closest friends since way back. He looks at me. He's like, dude, you're stupid. Why are you doing all this work? Here's what you do. While you're doing one of them, turn Camtasia on record the damn thing, and then just sell the video course, right? Or outsource it. So start, find someone who's willing to do this thing for you for 200 bucks, and you'll make 300 bucks margin, and no one will know the difference. So I did the video thing, and I thought, I just basically went to one of my clients, and I said, hey, if I just did this for you for free, can I record it and reveal it and put it in a package? He's like, sure. I said, okay. I didn't expect much from it, didn't know, but I thought, it's worth a shot. It won't take me very long. Well, lo and behold, one year later, senior year of college, I made $115,000 from that course, right? So let's look at the, trans like the whole process. I fell into being an affiliate of it, took very little time, very little energy, very little money, very little risk, if any, to put up that one page Right? It started to make money. I let the market tell me what they wanted to do to help triple my revenue from that. And then I had a list of people. I observed what they were doing. Um, oh, one of the things, before I did the video course, I did send a SurveyMonkey survey out to my list of customers, which I had like 30, 40 at that point. And I had like 72% of them or something said, yes, we would buy this video course. That would be awesome. So now I have a vehicle to do market research, as small as it might be, but still, and then I created a product and went on to make a lot of money. Now, with that product, you know what happened that was so funny? The guy who sold the software started selling my product as a back end. And every one of the affiliates that used to sell his software became an affiliate of mine to sell it as their back end. 
So now I've walked into relationships, right? I don't have to ask this guy to promote my product. I've been making him so much money, it's a, it's a, it's, it makes sense. It's just, you know, he asked for the link. I didn't even know how to set up an affiliate program for it. That was like the hardest part I ever did, like the hardest thing I had to do because I had to get him a link and I didn't know how and I had to like scrape it together. But that was the process that ensued. So this is why a lot of times you'll hear me really preaching about start with affiliate marketing because you can do it quickly. You can do it with very little risk, very little money, etc. cetera. A meat story is identical in a different way. He was doing MLM, network marketing, he tried to do all that stuff, completely falling flat on his face, falling more and more and more into debt. And then after that, he found affiliate marketing, launched a couple of campaigns. What kept him going, well, even though he's losing money in 15 campaigns, he had made some sales. And he was like, I, I'm seeing it, right? And he's a very mathematical, technical guy. The guy has a PhD in physics. So for him, it was an Excel file waiting to happen. Right? And it was like fun. So he dove in and 16 campaigns late, 15 campaigns later, a couple million dollars later, he's happy and glad that he did it. But again, for the first, I don't remember his exact, for the year, for the first year, it was like 11 months or so, one after the other, fail, 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 until he hit on affiliate marketing. All right? I purposely am skipping by, guys. Yes, we make lots of money. Okay? So. Um, I just went through this whole story. Like I said, I tend to defer from my slides a little bit. But hang in there with me. Um, this was really cool, and I like to share this. This is my one bragging moment for the whole presentation. Um, three years ago, I was surfing online in college, and I saw this Business Week Top 25 Under 25 listing. I was like, what is that? That's so cool. Clicked it. And I sat there in awe, and I thought, my god, maybe one day, no. Oh, it was so awesome, right? But it was so far-fetched, so out there, I forgot about it. Like, I made myself forget, and it was, whoa, sorry. It wasn't on my goal, or it wasn't like on my goal list or anything. Uh, last year, June, I got a phone call from a rep at Business Week, and I'll, like, I actually remember exactly how it went through. I picked up the phone, and he's like, um, you know, I'm so-and-so. Just wanted to let you know we do this thing called Top 25, you know, Under 25 every year, and you've been selected as a finalist for the, like, the final 100. And I'd like to set up a date to do an interview with you to figure out if you, you know, make the Top 25. And I was like, I, was, I, I couldn't even talk at that point. I was in awe. And um, went one step further to find out um, one of the guys who I idolize and study a lot is Richard Branson. The guy amazes me. Um, well, turns out to pick the top 25 out of that 100, he was one of the main judges. So at this point, I walk around now every day knowing that at some point he saw my name. And that for me is like a huge deal. Um, I, then after that, they did a voting period uh, for the top 25, and actually after voting, I came in number two um, last year. So this is, it, was a, it was just a really big thing for me, um, non-revenue based, and it has nothing to do with the money, but it was just something, again, you know, if you really think it and tra track it back, it's affiliate marketing. I mean, I have a very unique business model compared to what all the other ones were doing. Probably have the, also the best lifestyle of all the ones. Um, we've been through some of this stuff. so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. One of the things I always like to, uh, like to ask guys, how many of you have a bad day? Have had a bad day? A bad month? Bad life? <laughs> right? Um, this is where I come across as a little bit of an a-hole. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, I don't care. Right? And I don't mean that like in a bad way. Um, guys, I could sit down with you over a beer and talk you through my life. I have been on my deathbed multiple times. I have gone into shock from loss of blood. I have been rushed to the hospital multiple times in ambulances. I have pretty serious health conditions. Uh, my business has almost gone bankrupt three times, um, all in the span of the last five years, right? All during the time where my business has grown 100 plus percent every single year. So I get it. Life is hard. Things are hard. So what? That's the question. Right? So I don't mean that to be mean, but you, you, if you want to do this, guys, you have to just do this. Um, I'll give you, I'm not going to use names, but recently, um, a close, I don't, I don't help, this is going to sound wrong, but I tend not to be very willing to talk to family and friends about what I do and to help them. The reason is they take it for granted and they don't do, right? 
and they always have excuses, and they end up asking you to do it all for them. A very close family person um, who asked me recently to help him, and uh, I said, okay, he really, was really genuine that he really wanted help. He was really ready to do it. Um, set him up, gave him everything, gave him all my contacts. I said, here's exactly what you need to do. Um, this person will do your opt-in page, this person will do this, this person will do that, let's go. Three months have gone by, nothing. Went to him last week, he was actually at our house, and I said, why? I just happened to ask, and I knew, it was gonna be some reasoning. And he's like, oh man, I'm so sorry, in the last few months I've been busy buying a house. I've been totally busy. Guys, that's not the mindset that's gonna get you where you need to go. So what? You're busy buying a house. Make time. If you really want it, you'll, you'll get it. That's the first question you gotta ask yourself, all right? So, this is a little line I like to say. If you guys can write it down, write it down. It helps me a lot. And actually, a lot of people have told me that it's one of the, I run a site called IWillFight.com. I make blog posts every there now, now and then, where I talk about just stuff that's going on in my life, lessons I'm learning by you know, building a team, building business, relationships, some of the hardships I've gone through and how I react. But I always say, when life pushes you, this is the attitude I have towards obstacles, okay? It's a little bit of an arrogant attitude, but it totally helps me. It's when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push back. But you gotta smile. That smile is a key, okay? That's the, that's, that smile is the, in, the intimidating factor that says, I'm not, I'm not afraid of you. Like, I'm gonna stick this through. Most people don't do that. Last point, and we're gonna get into some really key details. Um, it's not all about the money, okay? I do this business for a lot of bigger reasons, a lot of bigger things. Was that, were any of you at PPC Costume Live? That's Becky. That's good. <laughs> um, it's only one person. Um, Becky, you remember how much money we raised for what we were doing? Ninety-two. <laughs> uh, we raised ninety-two thousand dollars in one day for those kids right there. Um, I work with an organization called Asima in India, and uh, the whole story behind it is a few year, uh, year and a half ago. Um, I was going to Mumbai to set up our India office, and I just, I went and spent, a, you know, I decided to, uh, this guy right here, I told you about mentors and coaches, this man right here, if you can see him, I would step in front of a train for him any day, any time, any minute. I owe him everything. He is the most brilliant person and the most giving guy I've ever met. Uh, he came with me to help me. I don't pay him. He's never made money off of me. He just does it because he can help. Came with me, made one deal. I'll help you set up your office. I'll help you do all that stuff. However you gotta spend one day with me at a nonprofit. We can't just sit in our five-star hotel the whole time, we need to go see the real world. I did, fell in love with these kids. These kids live on the street, they are, they're, have you seen Slumdog Millionaire? Right, so um, they live, they have literally nothing. Um, this is an organization that builds schools for them to get them off the street, to give them an education. These kids are the happiest kids I've ever met in my entire life and I cannot figure out for the life of me why. But it's that little, factor that made me fall in love with the kids and uh, we are now completely wrapping ourselves around them and helping fund school development, boarding schools. Our next project is to build a boarding school so we want to get these kids completely off the street, right? Completely, like they don't, they have to go back home right now at night and that's a hostile environment. So all, all the work we do during the day gets kind of deleted overnight. So now we want to get them completely off. I just share this with you because sometimes you're, you hear and you, you, the money, the money, 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 it's always going back and forth. Sometimes you need to take a little bit of break and Think of the deeper reason why you could be doing this, because when you go through those obstacles, and you go through those hard times, that is gonna, what's, is gonna push you through. Because then you're not just not making money, you're letting down, you know, you're giving up a huge opportunity to help a lot of people. So that's helped me a lot. Um, this is something I envisioned I would be doing when I was 40 or 50, I'm 26 as of tomorrow. And it's amazing, and I love it. I love every minute of it. I'm gonna skip all this stuff. This is a meet. If you guys don't know, I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures of a meet because uh, he has—he's just been an amazing business partner and close friend. Um, and these are all his pictures from traveling. Um, this is what he does while I work. Just so you guys know, while I'm running PPC Classroom, this is what he does. Um, all right, you guys ready? We're gonna go through five steps. Step one: finding an affiliate program. Okay, there's a lot of places to go. But we're, we're talking about quick, fast, something you can use and get started with. So I'm gonna say just use ClickBank for now. Let's not overcomplicate all the different places you can go to get affiliate programs. 
take five minutes to sign up. If that, you get an instant link or an instant ID. With that ID, you have access to over 10,000 products. You can be now an affiliate for over 10,000 products in pretty much any niche you can imagine. Okay, now, that's ClickBank. Uh, site has changed, but the tabs haven't. They decided to make it uglier, so. Um, seriously, it's like green and yellow. Anyone seen it recently? ClickBank, if you're watching, change it. It's ugly. Um, click promote products up here. Okay? Still there, even with their new site design. Now, if you've got some idea of some niche you want to get into, okay, type in the keyword. There's got some categories you can pick through. Hit go. All right, and what you'll see is a list like this, okay, of products with some stats under here. You gotta understand what these mean. I'm gonna show you in a second, because these mean the world. They will tell you everything, whether you should even bother with the product or not. But they rank it in, um, in popularity. Right now, right over here, it says popularity. You can change that, but that's the default. And basically means this one sells the most. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, well, I'll ask you this in a second. Here's all the numbers, okay? You got per dollars per sale, what you could make in the future if it has recurring. In this case, it doesn't, so no recurring. Percentage of sales, 75%. Now we get into the two numbers that make the biggest deal to me. Percentage referred. How many of their sales are referred by affiliates? That says 96. Gravity. Gravity is like the, it's like asking what is gravity is asking like what does life mean. They have like the most complicated definition of what gravity stands for. So I've just dumbed it down. This is not exactly right, but it just makes sense. It's good enough to know conceptually how to look at gravity. Just imagine as if it was how many different affiliates have sold that product within the last 30 days. Okay? But they got like this whole complicated uh, uh, formula they use. Just don't worry about it. You don't really need to know that, that much detail. This has 461.27. 461 different affiliates, different people have sold at least once in a pretty recent period. Now let me ask you this, is that for you being an affiliate who wants to also sell this, is that good or is that bad? Okay, I got good and I got, who said bad? I got a bad back there. Bad? Good. All right, let's do this. Raise your hand if you think it's good. Raise your hand if you think it's bad. Even split. It's great. It's awesome. Think of it this way, guys, and, and, and build your business around this concept, especially when you're first starting. Go for a small piece of a big pie rather than going for a big piece of a small pie. It is so much easier to go grab a small piece of a big pie, okay? The way I look at this, remember I told you in my story where I was like, man, I checked and there was nobody selling that product, and I was like, I'm brilliant, I'm genius. Why do you think there was no one selling that product? <laughs> Seriously. So, big rule right now, especially when you're just starting. Do not reinvent the wheel, do not be creative, do not be a genius. Be that guy that copies. Be that guy that doesn't be creative. He's just doing nothing creative. Be that person, okay? If you want to make it quicker, be that person. What this tells me, how, the way I look at it is, man, if 461 people can do it, I sure as hell can do it, right? 96% of their sales are coming from, why would 461 people be promoting this thing? If it didn't sell, it's selling. So all I need to do is get some traffic. This is awesome. Here are some numbers. 461 is insane. You will not see that on most products. If I see 20 or above, I'm interested. If I see 50 or above, I'm happy. If I see 100 or above, give me my link. So 20 or above, I'm interested. Below 20, typically not, but there are cases I might try it. 20 to 50, you know, interested, 50 to 100, happy, getting ready, excited, 100 plus, give me my link, I wanna start. Okay, the higher percent referred, the better, the higher the gravity, the better. 
The program that we uh, did a case study here on is something that Amit's made millions of dollars off of and is generous enough to share with everybody. There's a program on ClickBank called Reverse Phone Detective. That is the landing page of it, okay? Which is why it works so brilliant, because it is a very simple landing page. Their sales process is awesome. You land, you, basically what you do is you buy some ClickBank ads and you send people here. They type in a phone number, they do search now. I actually just fell victim to this very type of campaign like three days ago. To think, like I sell this stuff and you know, I really thought I was gonna get the person's name and then it gave me that. And it's like, yeah, we found it. Person's in Florida. You, you still want it? I'm like, yeah, kind of, I, that's what I asked for. <laughs> um, okay, just hit continue, but why? Because here's what we'll do <laughs> for a premium membership. You can have you know, a whole bunch of them for the whole year or for one report. And it's like, son of a gun. It works really well, though. I almost bought it. Okay? The only reason I didn't buy it was like, I will not fall victim to the same marketing I've helped create. <laughs> because I really wanted to know who that I had a phone number, and I couldn't figure out who it was. And when people call my cell phone, um, I don't pick up unless it says yeah, I know their name. And then there was a number I was kind of recognizing. So I almost paid. It works like a charm, right? This is the sales process. So when we, when, before I promote stuff, I look at the sales process and I try to just think like, is it a good sales process? And it's common sense being used. This was brilliant, really quick, really short, really easy. That's why it sells well. How do you get your link? Guys, you have a standard link for everything, okay? There's two parts of that link that get changed. This is why ClickBank's so easy to work with. Your ID, so in my case, if I put like Onyx and Gall, I would just put that in there. Whatever I've told phone search, that's the product ID. Voila, you have a link. You do that for 10,000 different products, you have links to 10,000 different products. Um, this is actually from that very uh, campaign, uh, however, not in ClickBank. Uh, reverse phone detective type of campaigns are in a lot of different networks, and Amit is promoting it through one, uh, a different one now that gave him a raise. Amit's doing like, four to six grand a day. All he does is promote that front end page you guys saw where the people are typing in their phone number. And he didn't create any of that. That's some other company's stuff. Um, step two, getting traffic, keyword research. Um, I'm not gonna show you the mind Jedi tricks, right? Because those take time. My goal here is to get you up, get you quick, uh, quickly running. So um, we're gonna go to that tool. It's a really funky looking keyword uh, URL, so instead of that, maybe you just go to Google and type in AdWords Keyword Tool, or Google Keyword Tool, and it's the first link, so. 100% free, awesome keyword tool. They just recently, uh, no, it's been a few months now, but now Google even tells you exactly how many times that keyword was searched. So, <laughs> there's no better place than to get it right from Google. Then you go into that tool, and for something like this, you would type in reverse phone detective. Why? Because that's what it is. And Google will come back and tell you all the keywords that are related to that, that get searched, how many times it got searched, how competitive it is, all that information. You would get a report. So here's the, I go in, type in reverse phone lookup, okay? And that's the report I get back. I get my keywords. Look at all the keywords. I didn't think of these. Google's telling me. I get my advertiser competition. Do not worry about this aisle, l this little column. Leave it alone, okay? Just forget about it. It doesn't matter. Um, average uh, search volume for the last month. Average search volume altogether over the course of the year. So reverse phone numbers. And now you can also sort these. So phone lookup is a million. Reverse phone numbers were searched 74,000 times inside Google. So you get a lot of cool data. What I would do is then I just start, for, to start, right? I mean, eventually I want to have thousands and thousands of keywords, but to start, I'm looking for a few hundred, okay? So what I'll do is, where's my, oh, oh well. You see the ad uh, link? There it is. I would just click these and it creates like this little file for you that it keeps adding the keywords in for you. Focus on the long tail. Does any, everyone know what long tail is? No? All right. Uh, words uh, like phone is not. Something like reverse phone lookup is. 
So long tail keywords are typically three, four, five word phrases that get low volume searches. Like the word phone will get millions. The word reverse phone lookup might only get thousands, may only get hundreds, right? However, think of it this way. The more detailed, the, more, the longer the keyword is, the more specific that person is about what they want, the better customer they are. Now one would argue, yeah, but that's only 500 searches for that keyword. Yeah, but what if you take 1,000 of them? That's higher quality traffic than if you took one word, which is phone, and got a half a million searches. You're going to get robbed on the word phone. Okay? One of the funny things to go do is go to Google when, when you get back in your rooms, type the word business in. There's like very little ads, if any. There's a reason. What are you looking for? Business school? Are you looking for how to start a business? Are you looking for how to buy a business? What, what's the point? What do, you, what do you want? So start with 1,000 keywords. You can start with even less. Your goal eventually is you, you might have 40,000. Once you find a campaign that works, once you find that profit initially, you will scale. The way you will scale is by adding a lot more keywords. All right, and um, our own VIP coaching group, we actually share a lot of software with the students that does all this in minutes. So it's like you pop in your keyword list and it'll create the long tail list for you and pop it back out. So as long as you've got initial list of keywords to go with. <laughs> and then what I always say is borrow from your competition, right? Didn't I say be that guy that doesn't reinvent the wheel, that just copies in a friendly way? Simple tool, it'll do it all of it for you. You wanna wonder what it is? No? I'm gonna skip to the next slide. <laughs> Keyword Spy, my favorite tool. I love this tool. A lot more have come out, I just got used to it. I'm hooked to this tool, so I just use it a lot. Here's what you do. This is the funniest, it's the funniest little tool to play with, okay? You can take a ClickBank product ID, type it in, hit go. The next page, it will give you a list of every keyword that is being bid on in pay-per-click to drive traffic to that product by affiliate. You click on that affiliate's ID, and it'll give you specifically all the keywords that affiliate is bidding on. And it'll tell you all the other products that affiliate is promoting in ClickBank. <laughs> so what I, here's what I do. Here's how I find out if I trust someone's keyword list, okay? I go into it, I type the product's name, I get you know, a lot of affiliates, I start clicking the affiliates. I look for that affiliate that seems to be promoting like 10, 15, 20 ClickBank products, right? And you can also see track record, so as long as they've been there for a while. That guy knows his stuff. So I'm going to borrow from him. I'm going to borrow his keywords. He did a lot of work for me. This guy's already done the testing. He's already done the money losing on the bad keywords. Why would I go do all of that again? I did this really funny uh, uh, case study once in, uh, on a stage where I was, at, um, was speaking for Derek Gale at uh, their customer appreciation event. And I went on stage. And I generated a list on stage of 21,000 keywords that his company bids on right there in front of all the students and basically created an Excel file, put it up online, told them they can come. If they sent me an email, I'd send them a link to it. So all the keywords that Internet Marketing Center was bidding on, how to make money, all of them, 21,000 in two minutes, and I pulled out all his 18 ads. And Derek's jaw dropped to the ground because he had written all 18 of them himself. And he was sitting in the back and probably thinking, why the hell did I just invite Onik to speak on stage? But all 18 ads, and when I asked Derek, on stage, I said, how many ads do you have in the system that are running, split testing and different? He said, 18. He's like, as a matter of fact, I'm writing a couple back here right now to split test them. I was like, great, I'll see them in a couple of days. Put them up, and I'll, and I'll know what they are. So it's really easy, really, really, really simple, really easy to do. Um, and you can get a lot more data from it, too, a lot more information. Um, step three, writing your ads. I'm going to go through some key things that you want to focus on when you write your ads. First thing is never, when you're first starting, do any of the other tricky placement options that Google gives you, okay? Do keyword targeted. Just, just remember that. Well, you can expand into the other stuff later. It's not that's not profitable, it is, but it's a whole nother ball game. You start writing your ads, you add keywords. So here's Google's interface to write your ad. 
by the way, I think you should get a Keyword Spy account, and I don't really see why you should be having to write ads. If you're just starting and you don't know how to write good ads, I think you should just borrow from your competition. I really think you should just go to Keyword Spy and see what people are putting up, what the good affiliates are using as ads, tweak it up a little bit. But a couple of pointers to remember. If your keyword is reverse phone search in this particular ad, if you put that in your title or anywhere else in your um, ad, it'll get bolded. What happens when it gets bolded? It stands out, it tracks size, right? Um, but at the same time, don't make a crappy ad with just those words in it, because no one will click it. Split test your ads always, okay? Because the way Google's system works, the higher your click-through rate, the lower you pay. So actually, a lot of people that are at like the number one spot, believe it or not, they're paying less per click than people that are on page four. Just because they've been there for a while, they've tested their way to the top, Google trusts their ad, Google has had its users tell Google that this ad is related to what I was searching. It's a good targeted ad for me. Um, and so they put them up top. They don't care if they pay the least because they're getting the same revenue because of higher clicks. So Google would care less. But that's how it works. So always be splitting two ads at, at the same time. All right. Here's another little interesting tidbit. Please write this down because this is something that a lot of people don't know and it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of one of those uh, mysteries. It's, you go through one phase of writing and creating your ad campaign where Google will say, what do you want to pay per click? Right? <laughs> if you want to go bankrupt, the best advice I can give you is follow the number that Google tells you. Because they say, what do you want to pay? We suggest you pay $5 per, uh, per ad click. We're just saying, we think it would be best for you. For you, only for you. Um, I don't even look at that, I ignore that number. I don't know where they come up with that number. Um, I think what it is is they look at like their whole algorithm and that number would get you the guaranteed no matter what happened, the number one spot. And you can get there really quick doing other things. 25 cents is kind of the number Amit and I came up with. Okay, why? I don't know. It just works. We've just started so many campaigns. Between Amit and I, we've spent over like three point some million dollars on Google now. So we got that gut feeling. You, just get, you get that feel for something, and it's like 25 cents just works. Now, we tweak it very quickly. We watch it for the next few days. Sometimes we have to triple it, quadruple it, depending on the niche. Sometimes we drop it, and we'll end up at seven, ten cents a click. But we'll tend to start at 25 just as neutral ground. All right? Um, Putting your keywords into Google, very simple. They just give you this one place. You copy and paste the list in. Set your budget. Very, very, very important. What can you afford to spend that day? What could you afford to spend that if it all went away, you might be a little upset, but you could still sleep at night? Right? 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 100 bucks, 10,000 bucks, whatever. It's up to you, right? I mean, Amit and I, between Amit and I, we've had daily limits of $15,000. But that's because we knew what was coming in on the other end. We knew our numbers, right? But uh, a lot of students start at 50 bucks, 100 bucks, just mode. Google will stop. They cannot bill you that day more than what you, they could keep, even if they sent you $100 more worth of traffic, they can't bill you more than what you set at your daily budget max. So this is kind of like, a lot of people think that if I turn my Google ads on, oh my God, in a few hours I might be bankrupt. That's not how it works. You control what they can charge you through that mechanism. Set your countries, write this down, okay? The number one way you will lose a lot of money is if you promote to a lot of the Asian countries because they love to click, but they do not like to buy. So US, obviously, UK, Australia, Canada. Again, US, UK, Australia, Canada. Those, I don't really care what niche it is, those seem to be the only ones that like to spend money. Okay, and if you would like to test, you can also get some good success in France and Germany. Uh, Germany's been up and coming. A lot of money being made in Germany right now by affiliates. Um, so, and actually, international PPC marketing is a huge open field right now. So don't avoid it. Um, I always, one of the jokes I've been using recently is, uh, doing PPC in the US is sometimes like swimming in a pond of sharks but doing it in the international waters is like swimming in an ocean of goldfish. 
Because with what you know here, those guys don't know that stuff. You can go in and completely dominate. But at the same time, you know, limit what countries you're going into. Uh, this is a part where you enter your daily budget. This, right after you do keywords, this is the next screen you'll see. And then maximum CPC bid right there. And right below it where we cut it off, it would say suggested maximum CPC bid. That's where you don't look at that number. Okay, hit save, and you're off to the races. You really have put up an ad on Google at this point. You are just as powerful as every Fortune 500 company out there that's advertising on Google using that simple little interface, and you are now officially competing with anyone and everyone just by having set up an ad that quickly. Now, of course, there are things you need to tweak to optimize. So here are some of the first things I would do to optimize. These aren't all of them, but these are the first. We're just going over quick ways to get you started. <laughs> if this needs to be said. Make sure your commissions are greater than what you're spending before you start to optimize, otherwise, what's the point? Um, lower your cost per click if you can. If you're already making a profit, if Google is already sending you traffic, you can lower your, your per click. However, don't go from 25 to 10. You'll kill your campaign. Go from 25 to 23. Give it another few days, go from 23 to 22. Give it another few days, go from 22 to 21. Inch it down on them. And you'll really quickly tell that when you hit that number, when you hit that like number that, that you can't go beyond, it, you'll see it. You'll see the impact on your campaign instantly. And then you can go right back up one number, and it'll go back to normal. But if you go from 25 to 10, you, you kill it. It's going to kill all the momentum you had. OK? Um, Ad group structure is the first thing that you can really pay a lot of close attention to. So what do I mean by ad group structure? Uh, the olden days, what we would do is take out 10,000 keywords, dump them into one ad, write two like, little ads for it, put it up, and that was good enough because there were so few people on Google and Google didn't care, and that was really easy. Right? Now your ad's running on 10,000 different keywords instantly. Uh, things changed. It matured. Google found out that you know, they want your ads to be targeted. You know, they really do. They, they, don't want ten, they don't really believe that 10,000 keywords can be that closely related that they could use the same ad in the same landing page. So in an ideal world, Google would like you to have, well, they don't say this, but we've discovered this, one keyword per ad. One keyword per ad. Now. 10,000 keywords means you need to set up 10,000 ads. How many of you look forward to doing that by hand through the way I just showed you? Don't freak out. There are softwares that you click a button, boom, poof, it does it. It also creates custom landing pages for you like that. So the nice thing about PPC is there's a lot of tools because it's a very technical type of thing. There's a lot of tools. The second biggest thing, which I never used to do purely out of laziness, but it can double, triple, quadruple your ROI, allow you to spend more money on the good keywords, hence kicking out your competition, hence getting more traffic, is track your keywords, all 10,000 keywords, individually. If I were to walk up to you and say, keyword number 567, is it profitable or is it losing you money? You should be able to look me right back in the face and say, it's running at an ROI of 13%. It's making me money. Or that one's running at an ROI of 250%. It's making me a lot of money. Or no, that one's running at a negative 32%. I'm losing money on that keyword. That, if you can look me in the face and give me that answer, you are running a well-optimized, you, you are in the game. You are one of the players, truly one of the players in the game, if you can give me that answer. Now, seriously, how do you do that? Again, don't freak out. There's software. We actually give software away to free, for free to our students that does it all for you on the fly. You literally will create, you, it's, you do a few clicks, install something real quick, and every day it'll create a report for you, and then you click on this one button that says, give me my bad keywords, and it'll produce a whole list saying, these keywords suck for you, you're losing X amount of money, and then you would say, please turn them off, and it'll go in and turn them off for you. Now, you guys start to see how that's improving your ROI on your existing campaign, because all that money you were spending on those keywords is gone. Now all that extra money you're getting allows you to raise your bids a little bit. Just even a few cents might put you 
a couple ad spots higher. The minute you do that, you're going to get more traffic. The more traffic you're getting, the more sales you start to get. The more sales you're getting, your ROI keeps going up. Do you see how that exponentially leads, it snowballs into you dominating that niche? But it's because you are doing your ad group structuring correctly to make Google happy and to make the visitors happy, and you're also kicking out your bad keywords. So this is something that Amit loves to share with people, and uh, so I share it with as well. He uh, did over $140,000 in commissions in just 30 days. Pure PPC, no list marketing, no product development marketing money in that. That was purely uh, taking traffic from here to here. Yes? Um, I don't know for this particular one because this is not mine. But you know, I would assume he likes to run at about a 100 to 150% ROI. So I would assume he probably spent about at least 50 to 60,000 of that on, on, pay, on pay per click. Um, but just so you guys know, he started with a daily budget of 50 bucks. Okay, he started with a credit card limit of 1500 Today he has an Amex black card that has a credit card limit of like 350 My credit cards have a limit of like 120 I didn't start there. Believe me, we started right where you guys are. I didn't have any money. I was borrowing from my dad to try to do stuff. So really quick, you can ramp this stuff up very quickly. Within three years, he went from a $1,500 a month um, max to like 300 some thousand a month. Because as long as you're paying those bills, it's in their advantage. I mean, Amex loves it. Amex would love to give you as much money as you want as long as you're paying your bills. So in short, it's, guys, that right there is the exact same system Amit and I use. Okay? I haven't held anything back. To start a campaign, that's what we do. It's what we do once we start a campaign that starts to make us dominate a niche and starts to help us scale from making uh, $20 a day in a campaign to making 3000 right? Um, it's the exact system we work with our VIP coaching students on, hands-on. We have coaches that make, uh, our average coach makes about twenty dollars to $25,000 net a month. And uh, it's, it's the exact system that, that they use. Um, our students are succeeding left and right. Uh, you guys saw the numbers. I, I'm actually really looking forward. We're going to get new numbers soon. Um, and we've been getting some video case studies and stuff, and there are students that literally started in February, and the last one I saw uh, was a ticket. Someone submitted a support ticket. He just quit his job like two weeks ago, and he said he's making five times what he was making at work, and barely is working. So a um, couple more students. Uh, Harriet is, was actually one of our coaches for some time, um, and she said you know, the, her favorite part was that she used to be there. She gets to be there for her kids when they get off the bus. Um, she went from working you know, a desk job, office assistant to, uh, you can see, average daily commissions of three, four grand, of which, you know, oh, I'm sorry, average monthly commissions. Um, she's currently up to 7,500 a month profit as of five months ago when I first last talked to her. Don't know what she's doing now. Um, but she stopped being a coach, so <laughs> I'm assuming she's doing really well. Um, David, who's actually a, a local from here and uses his PPC income to fund nonprofit. He has a, uh, has a nonprofit about saving the world's oceans. And yeah, he actually uses PPC to raise money for, for his nonprofit work. Um, Ran, uh, if you guys know PPC Bully, have you guys heard anything about PPC Bully? That's coming out, right? One of our, one of our, uh, one of our key case studies is one of the co-founders of PPC Bully, um, who got a 60% bump once he learned our optimization techniques. So the stuff that we teach behind the scenes, um, he was able to take his successful campaigns and increase 60% um, pretty much within the course of a month. Um, I just love this case study because the guy's name is exactly the same as one of the biggest Bollywood stars. And so for about a period of 13 seconds when I got it, I thought, holy shit. <laughs> Amir Khan is one of my cu customers? Can I be in a movie? Um, it's not him. I saw the picture and thought, oh, it's not him. Um, but first sale in the first week, that's just as exciting. It really is. Um, you know, because here's the thing. How many of you have a, a spouse or someone or a family friend or someone close to you who has an impact on you who's not quite sold on what you're doing? There's more of you, just not being honest right now, right? You know, the, you know all it takes to convince them? Money, yes, but at least to buy you a window is one sale. If you can just log in and say, there's $32 I didn't have yesterday, and all I spent to make that was 12. There, you're going to get this. You're going to get, uh, oh, OK. And for about seven days or 15 days or 20 days, they'll, they'll leave you alone for a little while because you know, 
you know? And then seven to 15 days later, they will have forgotten that one sale, and by that time, they'll come back to you and say, you know what, you, and then you say, oh, here's a couple thousand, by the way. I didn't have been updating you, just wanted to let you know. Um, it's the easiest way to, to get someone to support you. So that first sale, although it might not make you a multimillionaire, is probably one of the biggest days of your career. I remember my first sale. I remember it exactly. It was for the Better GPA product. And it was $47. It was by a woman named Megan. She was a mom of a student. And God bless her, but she drove me nuts. But I love that $47. I spent 300 to make it, but it was $47, and I still remember it. Andy Huang, who is now not only one of my closest friends, he's one of our lead coaches, and he is now doing a lot of pay-per-click training. He's traveling around the world. He's running workshops in Singapore and Malaysia. We're traveling in Asia soon together. We're doing workshops in Singapore and, and maybe in China. Um, started right here, and he says, he always likes to say, I went from soda money to making over 10 grand. That number is way out of date. He is making a lot more money right now. Um, he, is, he used to have a business doing deca millions, um, doing retail. He had deals with Circuit City, Best Buy, all those big retailers. He has since scratched it and doesn't care about it anymore because it was too much hassle and the economy truly impacted it. Doesn't have to worry about it. Um, Dane, one of our recent case studies, no longer making 25. I think last time we talked to him was like over 30. Um, one of our PVC classroom students, and he says he went from okay income to great, again, using those back-end optimizations, um, and also using the amazing stuff up front um, that we were able to teach him. And he's actually, a lot of these students, by the way, are, are international. He is from the UK, I believe. Um, you know, these are, these are the exact students. There were exactly, these students and myself were exactly in the same place a lot of you are in. How many of you are looking to start right now? Like, you're not actually you know, making anything online, are looking to start, raise your hands. Okay, so that's a big, a big portion of you guys. That's exactly where I was. And for the others that have started something, how many of you have a product that you're selling, your own product, right? Now keep your hands up if you're running PPC to those products. Oh, excellent. Back table over there for those of you who seem to want to know who to network with. There's a lot of hands up there. They're looking around like I'm with me. <laughs> um, so again, remember guys, biggest mistakes I made, there was no coaching, there was no help, no system. If you're gonna do PPC, there's a big difference between doing PPC and a lot of other forms of marketing. You're not just putting your time at risk, you're now putting money at risk, right? So it's the double whammy. And if you don't have a system to follow, then you are gonna be in trouble. Um, the first year, the other thing I refused to do, <laughs> purely out of force because I didn't have any, but I refused to invest in my business. Right, the education and the learning. I thought I could do it all on my own because I was a smart kid. Come on, I had a full ride in college. This was easy, right? Not so much. The minute I started to invest, my business took a complete, I mean, right now, in, now I would spend about 30 to 40, maybe $50,000 a year in education. Uh, I've given stock away in my company for mentorship. Uh, I'll pay 10 grand to go away for three days somewhere. I've paid up to $25,000 for one coaching program because all I need to do, let I me mean, think about it in the end of the day, all I need to do if in those five, six, seven days, if I just walk away with like one little thing, just one, just one. I, I, I'll give you a perfect example. You got, Yannick was here. I went to Yannick's Underground, not this year, the past year, and uh, I took a couple of my team members. Um, you know, we bought three tickets, the flights, the hotels, uh, all that expenditure. And of course, when I go there, we went to dinner, we went drinking, it cost me a lot of money, probably total about eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to take my team there. And then what happens? During the sessions, I wasn't sitting in most of them, I was out goofing around with people and all of that. Happened to be in one session, and I heard one piece of advice. And the guy said, it was uh, Mike Hill, and he said, on your upsell pages, don't say buy now, say upgrade order. That's it. And when I heard that, I was like, oh sweet, I'm done. Thank you very much, I'm gonna go drink outside at the bar. Because I knew I had walked away with what, and that has, I don't even know how much money that's made me. Seriously, I have no clue. But that completely shot my conversions through the roof because it was one little thing. So I invest a lot now in my education. Um, 
Our students had the exact same, they had no experience, they started just where you are, they got a system that works, they got the coaching they needed, okay? Guys, it's one thing if I'm gonna hand you a piece of paper or a book or a course, right, and say, see ya, good luck, thank you. 10% of you may actually be able to figure it out. What happens though, right when you hit that one, because you always tend, you know, everyone hits that one situation that's just not covered in that book, right? What do you do? Like seriously, what are you gonna do? You either better be willing to spend a lot of money to figure it out, and that's what happens with most products. Or how many of you would just prefer to call someone or to put in a ticket and have someone who makes twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month doing exactly that answer your question specifically and say, in your situation, after I logged into your account and checked, I would do this if I were you, right? So the coaching has been huge for these students. Most of our case studies come from, from our VIP coaching students. So how many of you, what if you could have the exact same system, right? What if you could do the exact same thing that all of these students have been doing using, now actually the system is improved. We have had over 21,000 students go through PPC Classroom in total, which is why I'm, I can't wait to get the next number. It's gonna be huge. Because the time I had 4.2 million, it was when I had 6,000 students, a little over. I've since put another 15, so 14 plus thousand students through it. So can't wait to see the numbers. But we've perfected our system. We deal with them every day. We get the questions. We see what they're, go what they're going through and we update the training. And we bring on more coaches and we fill in the holes so the longer anyone's waited, the more benefit they're actually gonna get. And then again, how many, again, the four days, why did I pick four days? Did I pick it because it's a funny looking number and it's a great marketing ploy? No, it's because we've had, it was an internal joke in the team when we launched this course in October between the support team. Um, for some reason, there was like one day where we had back to back to back, a lot of people that were like, I made my first sale in the first four days. I made my first sale in the first four days and we just couldn't figure out like why it was four days. And we had like, a lot of them came in. Like if you heard like in our office, there was like one support person that was like, oh, I just got the four day one. And then it was different people. So that's where I got the number from. For some reason, four days seemed to be the magic number for our students using the system. Now, again, guys, four days, assuming you're implementing and not just reading it. Because if you don't take action, you're not gonna make any money. So what do you need to start, right? A, you need the system. We covered that. You need a niche. This is a big, I mean, this is where you can make a big mistake, right? Because what if you went after the better GPA, uh, the study skills niche? Good luck, right? So you need something that's proven, you need something that's been reviewed, you need something that an expert could tell you that niche will work. We've done stuff, so we've checked it out, we've done campaigns in it, keywords, and then you need good affiliate programs to promote. That's the second place you could totally fall apart. You can have a great niche, whereas one program will make you money, the other one will not. Okay, that is a very common, common element. That reverse phone lookup landing page sales process, if you gave me 15 minutes, maybe give me two minutes, I could completely screw it all up. I can make it so that it makes nobody any money. Very easy to do, okay? So the sales process that your affiliate product uses is very important. Great landing page. And then hand-holding and coaching by those that have done it over and over again. I really keep thinking that that's the key. Okay, even if it's not with us, that's fine. Just find the person that, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna do PPC, you wanna try it, find the person that you can ask a question when you run into a problem. Okay, so what if we gave you everything? I mean, how many of you saw this coming? Nobody? I was creative? One person saw this coming, right? Um, what, I mean, so let's, let's go through this, right? The system, I've given you, I've shown you through that. That's exactly what PPC Classroom is. We're a system, right? The whole course is a system. Niches, every month, three different niches that we've reviewed, covered, and in many cases, some we've even tested campaigns in. Keyword list, so you can save your money on Keyword Spy. We went in and we pulled all the data out. We've given you the exact keywords to start with. The top three affiliate programs, okay? Um, one of the fortunate things about being learned as a company and having over 100 some thousand students is when we call a merchant or when we call a network, we can get more data out of them than you can on your own because we've got mass pull. 
So they're willing to share a lot with us. So we get a lot of behind the scenes numbers on affiliate programs. Um, and affiliate networks, we get specific unique relationships with networks that will give you a, a bump up in your commission and give you auto approval and give you access to the 15 campaigns they don't reveal to the world, right? It's just for, just for their select VIP. So we, we go through those. What if we just gave you the landing pages, right? I'm a big believer in building a list. I don't care if you're doing PPC or if you're doing forum marketing or if you're doing solo ads. Build a list. Because okay? one of the biggest pitfalls of being an affiliate is you, if you're truly just a PPC affiliate, you are not building an asset. You are not building a business. You are building an income that can be ripped from you any minute. If Google wakes up tomorrow morning and is a little bit cranky, bye-bye. I have I've had that done to me. I had a campaign with Google. Well, I had an account with Google that I was making a... I think at peak, like 8,500 a month. It wasn't one of my big accounts, so peak was like 8,500 a month profit. Average was like 6,000 a month profit. Guys, that's a full-time salary. And one day, here's why they shut it down. There was a little campaign that was getting five visitors a day that I had forgotten about that was going to a landing page that they said got infected with malware, like got infected with spyware. Two things to that. A, the campaign was barely active. I had forgotten about it. It was a test, didn't work. I was supposed to shut it off. B, there was no spyware on that page. I checked it over and over. I proved to them there was nothing there. C, I said, delete it, turn it off. I said, actually, I'm going to move my entire site to a different server. I moved it all. I said, do another check. I have moved everything over. Um, I asked, uh, contacted them six or seven times. The eighth time, they sent me an email, and it said, and I kid you not, Please refrain from communicating with us any further on this, talk, on this topic. Your account has been banned. There is nothing we will do for you. They just ripped away a full-time income from me. But you know what? I didn't really, I, I mean, it hurt. It sucked. But I, at the meantime, had built a 15-plus thousand person list that I market to to this day. So at least I left, was left with something. And I still make some money. And I have an asset. I can put that 15,000 person list and sell it to somebody. So please, build a list, and our landing pages really, really, really focus in on that. And hand-holding by our best coaches. All right? Um, Nine-module system. You get videos, you get audios, examples, and case studies. Our team does all the research for you and actually gives you the niches that you want. We find the best affiliate programs for you. Like I said, we get insider data. We pick and prone from all of that. They give you our best landing page templates, all done. We do suggest that you tweak them a little bit, but you can use them as is, out of the box. We coach and track you the entire way. The next part is, what if you could actually, what if Amit was building a campaign, and you could actually like sit right over his shoulders and watch everything he did? How many of you would like that opportunity? You can raise your hands real quick. Like, he's building a campaign, and you literally just sit there and watch him, right? Well, here's what we did. We did uh, a boot camp um, that Amit literally built and launched a campaign. And we recorded every second of it. Every single second of everything he was doing. From niche research, selecting the program, keyword research, building the page, launching the campaign, and optimizing the campaign. Everything was recorded. Um, so. If you go through all of it, now the templates, we call them our $3.5 million templates as a little joke because um, I'm, between Amit and I, we split tests like crazy. Amit split tests a hell of a lot more than I do. But he, between him and I, we've spent $3.5 million and we've come to six templates. It doesn't matter what niche, what it is, we use the six same templates. We change colors, we change text, we change images, but formatting. We found that if you put a picture here on this template versus here, you will get 0.3% higher conversion. Well, guess what? 0.3% over tens of thousands of visitors is a significant amount of money for simply having moved an image from here to here. Um, so we've done everything. We've tested every element of that page. We give you a lot of great tools. We give you a tool that I spent a lot of money acquiring. I bought a company to get this tool that will let you track every keyword as many as you want. 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 for any network, ClickBanks, Commission Junction, all of them, to the keyword, you will know if that's making you money or not. Unlimited access to our VIP forum. 
So if you just bought this stuff, you'd be spending close to $6,200. A lot of people have. Um, our VIP program, just so you guys know, is currently closed, but it sells for $397 a month. And we don't apologize for that. It's very expensive to run it. And um, every student that's in it is ecstatic. Our ticket turnaround, um, this is, by the way, this is not tickets. These aren't people that we've outsourced, like this, this ticket responses to. It's not like uh, you know, billing and technical. It is, within 24 hours, a detailed, sometimes pages long, answer back to your question. After that coach logged into your account, if you so wish him to do so, looked at your situation and said, here's what you do next. Or cut and run. This sucks. This is bad niche. Cut it and run it. Go to the next one. And the campaign number two. Um, if you were at PBC Classroom Live, Amit did a really interesting exercise where he got everyone to stand up uh, who, was, uh, who, had, like, who was making money in PBC. He said, how many of you are making money? Stand up. Or I think it was raise your hands. One of the two. And then he went and asked him. He said, how many campaigns have you launched? The guy was like 50. How many have you launched? Like 30. How many have you launched? 20. How many have you launched? 100. How many have you launched? Not a single one of them. I think we had one person, actually. We had one person that said three and kind of killed the flow of our proof, but one person said three. But all of them, the rest of them were saying. So that made a point, right? Cut and run is something you need to be able to do. And a lot of times when you're starting, because you've invested so much, not just like time-wise, but emotionally into that campaign, you won't cut and run. But when you got someone who knows what they're doing to tell you and slap you on the wrist and say, stop it, that's not working, it's a bad niche, move on. You, it's a big, it, that in itself is worth a lot. Um, so unlimited hand-holding, VIP coaching, uh, $4,800 a year if you just wanted it. 400 bucks a month. We just launched a couple months ago, and that's what a lot of our students pay. You'd be spending over $12,000. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do for you is we're going to throw in full websites, um, and we've written out a whole year's worth of content for you that you can send to your list every single week with an affiliate link built into it. So all you have to do is generate leads to that front end page through PPC and then forget about it. We've got over, I think, a, I don't remember to be honest with you, but over 100 of them at this point. It's not 60. We've done a lot more. And sometimes we'll ramp them up. We do 10 a month in this case. 10 of them a month. And once you set it up, once you get your PPC working, forget about it. For the whole year, it's going to be marketing to your list and you don't have to worry about it using something like a member. Three, where we give you like the site, the niches, the keywords, the programs, every little chunk of it. That's a whole nother service. And if you attach the two of them, you've got everything from scratch. You've got everything from one through all the way to the end. And then turn on your pay-per-click. Optimize it, watch it, work with your coaches. Guys, you have to work with the coaches, otherwise it's, it's useless. You know, once you've put it all up, turn it on and go to your coach and say, what now? I turned it on. He'll go and look at it and tell you exactly what to do next. And it's in every niche you can imagine. I'm not going to bother going through all of them. We've covered them all from like rose gardening to cooking to back pain to yoga to chocolates. Um, the other thing we'll do is we will give you a free ticket to our workshops. Um, we do PPC Classroom Live events every year. And sometimes we also do workshops. And uh, this is a awesome opportunity for not only to imagine a room like this one, but just every single person in it was a PPC expert. And they were all making money doing this exact thing. And you had a laptop with you and you opened it up and said, what do you think I should do now? Here's where I am. That's exactly what these look like. Um, so that all put together is why our students are so successful. That's why we're able to go around saying $4.2 million dollars and God knows what number I'll be coming up with pretty soon. It's because we've given you the full works. I mean, you get the training, you get all the tools, you get all the sites, you get the niches, you get the programs, you get the keywords, and then to top it off and put the cherry on top, you get the coaching and the hand-holding. Um, so together, um, you would spend a gajillion, a billion dollars doing it. No, really, it's 20 grand um, is what a lot of students have spent with us. We have students that spend 5,000 per workshop. We just ran a workshop in Boston. We ran two of them. They spent $5,000 each. We had 40 students there. Um, and they walked away with having had a lot of personal time with Amit and our coaches and each other. 
And one of our students walked away and within two months wrote to us, this is our first workshop in January, within two months wrote to us and said he quit his job through the exact campaign that we had structured for him at the workshop that we had put together for him. Um, we don't know when the next workshop is, by the way, but uh, we will know pretty soon. We'll, we'll be scheduling them. So um, here's the deal I'm going to give for you guys, all right? Here's what we usually do, and this is something I like to do because, as you can see, I'm a big believer in testimonials and case studies and in getting our students' results. I'm not going to lie. It helps us market PPC Classroom. It helps our brand. It helps us know what we're doing makes a result, has a result. Um, it's how I'm able to know we have $4.2 million. We've got PPC Classroom 3.0 we're gearing up for, so we need your help. So all we ask to do, what Amit and I like, love doing, is we will give you all of this for just a small deposit of $19.97. All right? You have 90 days. Use our coaches, please. The minute you make $5,000 in net, and you just send us a video of you saying, I did it, and I did it because of PPC Classroom, we will refund your $2,000 to you. Plain and simple. I don't, guys, I, it's, you know, if you look at our business and you look at our model, me standing up on stage here and selling you something is not how I make my money. Right? I'm here because, A, I live in D.C., I love speaking and I love teaching this stuff, but this is, not, this is not about us making money. We're doing this because we want you to take it seriously, and I do have costs involved. I mean, I pay these coaches a lot of money. Imagine hiring a coach that makes $25,000 a month. Can you imagine the smooth talking that takes into that? <laughs> we pay a lot of money to get those coaches on. So I do have a cost, and I want to make sure you're committed to it. So that's all this is for. Um, we have room right now, as of the end of PBC Classroom, we had room for 12 more. So uh, I'm here for about 20 to 30 more minutes, and then I have to take off. But if you have questions, please meet me right back there. I've also got David with me. David, if you could raise your hand. And Encore with me right here. These guys are from my team, and they're hanging out. If we can help you in any way, please come introduce yourself and ask me questions. And if we can help sign you up for this um, and you want to work with us hands-on with our coaches, please meet me in the back of the room. I'll see you there. Thanks. All right.